Our final guest surgeon is Dr. Howard Gimbel of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Amongst his many surgical innovations, Dr. Gimbel has developed a new and exciting concept in pediatric cataract surgery. A planned primary posterior capsule opening, either as an attempt to prevent inevitable secondary cataract formation in young children, or to remove a posterior plaque, may be achieved using the posterior continuous curvilinear capsularexis technique. In creating a PCCC, a cystotome or bent needle is used to make a small central puncture in the posterior capsule. Additional viscoelastic is placed through the central puncture to push the vitreous face away. The circular tear is accomplished by using CCC principles and strategies. If the flap is pushed posteriorly with the viscoelastic, the tear may be extended with the cystotome or bent needle to elevate the edge of the flap so that it can be grasped with the capsularexis forceps. Note that the cystotome is always engaging the surface of the capsule so that it does not engage the vitreous face. Once the flap is elevated to be grasped with the forceps, I use forceps because it is easier to control the tear for the 360 degrees. Additional viscoelastic is added as the tear is extended to protect the vitreous face. One must be careful not to inject too much viscoelastic because the tear can be extended in an undesired direction with the force of the viscoelastic. Because the flap was turned posteriorly with the additional viscoelastic, it must be extended a little here with the cystotome to be able to grasp the edge with the forceps. In this case, PCCC is being employed for the removal of a thickened fibrotic posterior capsule plaque. In these cases, the PCCC is made as a controlled circle that encompasses the central opacity and results in a posterior capsule opening that resists extension to the equator. I first used this technique in 1987 for the removal of a dense posterior plaque in a seven-year-old male who had developed a secondary cataract after radiation for rhabdomyosarcoma. PCCC techniques can also be used as a method to prevent extension of a tear when a small linear or triangular posterior capsule rupture inadvertently occurs, and also when defects in the posterior capsule are present due to posterior lentiglobus. Posterior capsularexis requires the use of viscoelastics and may be done before or after PCIOL in the bag implantation by nudging the IOL eccentrically and slipping needles and forceps under the IOL. Before the posterior capsule circular tissue is removed, scissors should be used to cut any possible vitreous strands which may be adherent. The visual axis in this case has remained clear for two years postoperatively, but clinical experience has shown us that in some cases, Elschnick pearls grow across these openings and deposit on the vitreous face and reocclude the visual axis. To avoid this reopacification, I've developed a technique called posterior capsularexis with optic capture. With the lens in the bag, PCC is accomplished using the technique just described, starting with a central puncture, adding more viscoelastic, and creating a posterior capsule opening somewhat smaller than the optic of the implant and concentric with the optic. The leaves of capsule are then anterior to the optic to avoid pearl formation depositing posterior to the optic. Again, the PCCC is accomplished using capsularexis strategies, starting with a small puncture, adding viscoelastic to push the vitreous face away to try to maintain an intact vitreous face. 
I have used uh, Helon or Helon GV to have as clear a view as possible. And here, some viscoelastic is being added to push the vitreous face away before extending the tear beyond the central puncture. Sometimes the light reflex can be in the way and uh, the eye may have to be turned to one side or the other. And then the tear is extended until the flap can be grasped with the forceps and as with anterior capsular rexus, vector forces are applied to create a tear of the proper diameter and concentric with the optic of the IOL. The posterior capsule is thinner and it rolls up and uh, may be difficult to re-grasp, particularly if the viscoelastic pushes the capsule flap backwards. This child had a somewhat granular posterior capsule after the lens was removed. This cataract uh, was a secondary cataract. The child has had treatment for retinoblastoma and it was felt advisable to avoid vitrectomy and to avoid the necessity of a YAG laser capsulotomy, if at all possible. You can see now more viscoelastic is being added to again ensure that the vitreous face remained intact. So with this technique, we are avoiding anterior vitrectomy, and hopefully the visual axis will remain clear in this particular case because of the capsule leaflets ending up in front of the IOL. You can see that frequent re-grasping is advantageous with posterior capsular rexus, just as with anterior capsular rexus. And one has to take very short segment tears and release and inspect and regrasp frequently to achieve a properly sized opening and one concentric with the optic of the IOL. More viscoelastic being added. Sometimes the viscoelastic being added is to disperse debris or air bubbles to improve visualization. We first used this technique in April of 1993, and as of February 1994, we have used the technique in eight cases. So far, we haven't had the pacification of the visual axis in any case. This uh, tissue fragment will be removed after a scissor snip is taken underneath it to ensure no attachment to the vitreous. Dr. Tobias Noyhan first described optic capture with the anterior capsule. This was uh, written up in the International Edition of Ocular Surgery News in March 1992. He describes placing the haptics in the sulcus and then popping the optic into the anterior chamber, whereas we will place the lens in the bag and then pop the optic into the posterior chamber. So now the lens on this picture is grasped by the posterior capsule as opposed to being grasped by the anterior capsule, capsular rexus. In the surgical footage, we will now show placing the lens through the posterior capsule opening by nudging it posteriorly and inferiorly, at least 90 degrees away from the haptic junctions to get one side of the optic through the posterior capsule opening. And 
and then the other side will be nudged as well. And you'll see an immediate stabilization once the lens pops into the posterior chamber and is grasped by this opening that is smaller than the optic. You will see that the posterior capsule opening is now oval and the optic is posterior to the anterior capsule opening and posterior capsule opening. And we anticipate that the pearls will deposit anterior to the surface of the IOL. Certainly additional cases are needed to document safety and long-term efficacy before recommending the widespread application of this technique. Thank you, Dr. Gimbel, faculty, and sponsors for a terrific issue updating the recent advances in the challenging area of pediatric cataract surgery. See you next issue.